Hi there, my name is Ed Royan, Head of Global Products at Axiom Excel. Axiom Excel is a leader in providing regulatory and risk solutions across the world. I'm joined by my colleague, Richard Moss, who heads up our capital and risk product line. And today we're going to be talking about the new investment firm rules, which will be coming into force in the new year, which affect all investment firms authorised under the Markets in Financial Instruments Directive, commonly known as MIFID. At the moment, some investment firms are regulated under CRR, while others are exempted from CRR and are subject to local regulatory requirements. The risks faced by an investment firm around the impact of their activities on customers and markets, differentiating themselves from credit institutions that are exposed to market, credit operational and liquidity risks. IFR aims to harmonize the rules for investment firms across the EU by establishing a framework that is more relevant, provides an even playing field, and importantly, is more proportionate. But is it, Richard? Is it more proportionate? And will this be a welcome change by the industry? Thanks, Ed. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think there's two key aspects here. The ongoing capital calculation uh, for the requirements and the treatment of groups. So firstly, uh, one of the most important innovations in this new regime is the K factors. As always, there'll be winners and losers. Uh, for the small mid cap, probably yes, the rules are more proportionate if you qualify as an SNI, so a small non interconnected investment firm. But even then, the thresholds that have to be proved and monitored, that could be argued that that's not proportionate. For the larger firms who this regulation is specifically, uh, the K factors are more aimed at, the proportionality question it very much depends on scope and the application of some of the optionality in adopting the CRR uh, that still overlaps in places within the new IFR. Um, and there's certain thresholds and li limits that have to be demonstrated in monthly and quarterly reporting. So even calculations that may be deemed out of scope, the firms will have to prove that they're zero, for example. So that still poses a significant procedural and compliance overhead. Secondly, the treatment of groups, Again, all with good and proportionate intentions. There's group capital tests, K factor combined basis, K factor consolidation situations, which may lead to different reporting requirements. Clearly, all of this is based of, uh, upon a, a point in time uh, for the business and its risks. So it's fluid, but the appropriate monitoring and tracking and auditing of these interconnections is going to be crucial. Adding to this, uh, the UK rulebook, of course. Uh, questions over Brexit. So the actual timing of something intentionally proportionate may also play a big part in how easily it's tackled by investment firms. Yeah, no, lots to consider. So I guess that being said, Richard, what are the biggest challenges and things to be aware of uh, in this new regime? Yeah, there, there, there's quite a number and they're quite a vast group. So I think there's broadly seven main themes or groups of challenges to, to be aware of. Um, and they really highlight some of the additional effort that's needed and the difference between a single cycle of reporting, uh, which means you're kind of ready, versus what it's going to take to be compliant. So first of all, uh, we called out the timing. So if you're multi-jurisdictional, you need to be in a position where you can utilize the front running EU regime to roll out the UK. You don't want to be doing that twice. It's very inefficient. Then you have reconciliation and classification. Um, Reconciliation really referring to other regulatory submissions that investment firms have under MIFID, CMAR, CAS, but also the reliance upon strong internal reconciliations rather than client bank statements. Some of the definitions of K factors refer to internal processes. On top of that, in terms of classification, um, you've got the lagging and smoothing effect uh, for the rolling averages, so the data volumes on top of that pose a significant control dependency. I've highlighted ownership and valuation um, as, a, as, a, as a challenge. So the need for a market value or fair value. So not, and this is not just your own balance sheet. This is potentially, you have to have clear definitions of ownership, looking at tied agents, managed services and delegated assets, which lead into two other things, which is the data sources themselves and the operational nature of some of this data. So, depending on the, how tightly those definitions are over time for these investment firms, it can lead to, it opens up the risk of double counting uh, across a number of K factors, especially, as I said, when you're progressing through time. So calculations based upon different frequencies, daily, monthly, and rolling 
that need to rely upon that strict classification can get quite complex to monitor all the time. And then we touched upon before, it is, a, it is a theme, it's a challenge, the burden of proof, monitoring over time, proving that something is zero or underneath the threshold, so you've not triggered extra reporting. And lastly, the seventh category, let's not forget, pillar two. So effectively, the ICAP will continue under this new regime. Um, however, it's expected that it should be simpler for the class two firms, but it will heavily uh, rely upon the K-factor methodology. Great. So thanks, Richard. That's definitely some food for thought. Uh, I guess the new rules are coming into force in June 2021, um, with the related reporting following in September 21. So I guess for those listening, um, you know, and those impacted by the changes, it, it really is um, best to get cracking on preparing for these changes. So again, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you.